Hi, everybody. I'm actually quite scared. I mean, it's not true that I'm not scared because I just flew from San Francisco and I slept over, well, two hours in the plane. So uh, the chance of my demos failing is a bit higher than average, but let's, uh, let's uh, live with it. So let's start about that. I want to talk about the assistant, age of assistant. And uh, before, before going to my demos, let's uh, quickly think about a few questions. When was the last time you had a question in mind and in order to find the answer to that question, you actually walked into a library and opened an encyclopedia to find the answer? When was the last time that you wanted to check something from your bank account and you had to walk to the bank and uh, ask the question in the bank itself? When was the last time that you wanted to go somewhere with car and then use the paper map to uh, navigate somewhere? So if you don't remember the answer to these questions, this means that we, all of us are using technology. And in fact, all of us are using technology every day to make our life easier, lives easier and to save time. And there are lots of technological revolutions happening in the past century which, has, uh, which have really changed the life of lots of people. So I don't want to go through all of them. Let's talk about 20 years ago when web and PC and internet came. It's from that moment that all of a sudden we could actually find the answer to those questions from home. You just type it and, and uh, search for it and get the answers. And you can buy things from home, you can check the weather from home without needing to wait for the next time that the news is telling you the weather. Um, so fast forward, moving fast forward, 10 years later, another revolution happened, and uh, that's the mobile revolution, which basically we start to have, we be capable of doing whatever we could do with those uh, big clanky PCs in, at home on these mobiles, and they're even more powerful. And they can even do more. They take pictures. Uh, you can use it for commu communication. And um, it's per personal to you. And it's everywhere with you, so you can use it much more. So this is a mobile revolution which, which started 10 years ago and is still happening. These mobile devices are with us, and they're doing a lot for us. And uh, we're starting to be very dependent to them. But in parallel to that revolution, there is the AI revolution, which, happened, which is starting to happen in the more recent years. And what that means, the mobile revolution and AI revolution together, it's the age of assistance. It means that you want to be able to talk naturally like a human to these mobile devices and you want them to understand and get things done for you during the day in many different scenarios. So that's, that's what we're working on, Google Assistant and the other digital assistants which are, uh, which are being built. And that's, that's the goal and direction. So um, the rest of my talk will be mostly trying to show you demos of uh, things which um, Either uh, some of the most more advanced, more, more, more recent advances that we had in the digital assistant, and I will show you also examples of cases which is not yet live and we're working on uh, internally, and it will be coming in the next uh, few months uh, to the market. So uh, this is now going to we're going to move to my demos, and uh, this is um, my password. <laughs> so um, it's a, you could guess it. So. Um, we're talking about an assistant, an assistant in particular, when we call it Google Assistant, you expect it that answers questions, right? So let's start by showing you examples of uh, how we came along in uh, being capable of answering things um, uh, with the assistant. Hey, Google, how are you doing? Wonderful, thanks. What can I do for you? Can you please tell me how is the weather going to be tomorrow in London? Tomorrow in London, it'll be raining with a high of 13 and a low of 3 degrees Celsius. So, so note that uh, the way that I actually ask this question is rather in a natural sentence. I don't need to think how exactly I formulate it. It's, uh, I don't know, maybe it's 12, 13 words. If I was typing uh, like the traditional way on, on, a, on a desktop or a laptop, I was saying weather, London, tomorrow. So the NLP, natural language processing and machine learning, is helping us to understand that this long sentence means the same thing as that shorter one. Um, of course, weather is a very popular question, traffic, uh, uh, population of countries, all these things, these are popular questions. But when, when we think about an assistant which wants to help billions of people, we have to cover all the ranges of questions. So let me show you like, some examples of long tail questions. Something like, show me a list of rides in Europa Park. So, Europa Park's rides include Blue Fire, Silver uh, Star, Woden Timber Coaster, so and the, others. So the assistant should know even about these kind of long tail, very special questions. Even I could be able, I should be able to ask, ask questions about a particular items there. Something like, what is the height restriction of Blue Fire? 
You must be at least 1.31 meters tall to ride blue fire. So the point of this example is that the range of questions that we have to cover is really, really long range of long tail types of questions. So let me now show you one of the examples of the more recent natural language understanding improvements with how we can understand the like, long, longer and more complex questions. Something like, what is the name of the movie where Tom Cruise acts in it and he plays pool and while he plays pool, he dances? <laughs> The Color of Money is a 1987 movie directed by Martin Scorsese, starring Paul Newman, Tom Cruise, and Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio. So this is really the state of the art of how, uh, how type of complex uh, sentences we can understand, and this is a combination of machine learning and search technology together. So um, uh, let's go to the next example. Now I want to show you how this voice interaction could be merged with the other services. Let's uh, start with Translate, for example. We can have things like... Translate into Vietnamese, I lost my luggage in the train, can you please help me? Tôi bị mất hành lý của tôi trong chuyến tàu, bạn có thể hãy giúp tôi. You can imagine that it can be useful, I don't know whether we have Vietnamese in the room, which can verify, but, uh, but this is again like uh, uh, making the interaction with different services very easy. Now let me show you another example of interactions with other services, I take street view this time. I can ask a question again in natural language voice, something like, I would like to be on the top of Eiffel Tower right now. Can you please bring me there? Opening Street View. So I use voice interactions to, uh, to jump in a particular point in, uh, in some other service and application. So, so this, is, this is, again, how, how easier these, things, these interactions can become. But Whatever I showed, I showed so far is about world information and doing like public types of services. But when we talk about the assistant, assistant should be uh, your assistant, your personal assistant. So I expect the assistant to know and answer things which is special to me. And, uh, and, and when you use the assistant, you get uh, different answers for those questions. So I want to show you some of, uh, some of this aspect of the assistant. So when is my flight tomorrow? That flight is Swiss International Airlines Flight 461 to Zurich, which leaves tomorrow at 10 a.m. How is the traffic from Zurich Airport to my work? There's heavy traffic from Zurich Airport, ZRH, to your work, so it should take 31 minutes. So these two examples, I have not done anything explicit before. I have not said explicitly, this is my workplace. I have not said this is my flight. This is everything is happening automatically through my Gmail or through my the fact that I'm staying during the day in one, some particular place most of the time. Um, so, uh, so, the, so the assistant, by knowing these things, I don't need to, again, see the address of my work each time I want to talk about, uh, uh, talk about uh, my, my, my work address. So let me show you another example of how explicitly, actually, the assistant could also learn. How is my team doing? Barcelona is first in La Liga. So by the end of the talk, you will know a lot about me, my password, my team. Um, <laughs> So, uh, but the way that, the way actually the assistant knows my team is, what is my favorite team? You told me that you like Barcelona. So I actually explicitly told the assistant that I like that. So an assistant which can learn explicitly and get better, it's a next level of uh, um, uh, usefulness. So let me show you one of the more complex type of teaching that we're working on that right now. When the weather is more than 25 degrees centigrade, I can swim in the Lake of Zurich. Okay, understood. So I just tried to teach something to my assistant. Now, can I swim in the Lake of Zurich next weekend? There's no hope, but still. <laughs> no, you can't. The temperature is less than 25 degrees. But, but the point is that you can teach and the assistant can learn, and this is really going to make the assistants more useful. Now, I also can use the assistant for retrieving things which I, like a memory type of style, retrieving things which I expect the assistant to know. For example, last time I visited London, I went to a tapas place which I really liked it. What was the name of that? Barafina, here you are. Show me the reviews. Here are some results from the web. So, uh, so you can see again that how useful this could be for uh, like the memory types of use case. But now if, uh, if uh, when you want to memorize something, it's not only like the places you have been, it could be like the other types of material. For example, 
pictures. Uh, I often want to find a picture and show it to someone. Now, with, with, uh, with, uh, let me show you some example of how, would that, how that might work. Um, show me pictures of my father playing darts. I found this in your Google Photos. So this, this picture is, is taken a few months back, and I, and I never tagged anything by saying this is darts or this is my father. Again, everything is automatically happening through machine learning applied on, on images here, and now connected to machine learning happening on voice recognition and machine learning applied on intent uh, understanding. These all together make this so natural and easy and fast for me to get that, but uh, there is there's, uh, there's, uh, uh, there's those um, uh, things which is happening behind behind the scenes. So um, uh, let me now show you, uh, just to make sure that I this one, yeah, yeah I can. Uh, now I'm, I can show you an example of, I showed you my father, I have to show you my nephew too. She's the youngest uh, member of the family. Show me my pictures of me and my nephew drinking tea together. Let's check your Google Photos. Okay, so this is about personal aspect of the assistant. Now I want to talk in the next part of my demo is about context. Context is how when humans interact with each other makes our interaction to be much more natural. We don't need to repeat ourselves, we understand each other much better thanks to the context. And often if we remove the context, actually the sentences will not be even understood. Let's uh, show some examples of that. Show me pictures of Thomas. Here are some pictures that match. So there is no context, I said Thomas, and maybe that's an interpretation that one could come up with, the Thomas the Train. But if before that I was saying Bayern Munich team roster. The roster for FC Bayern Munich includes James Rodriguez, Robert Lewandowski, Aryan Robin, and others. So there's a Thomas Muller here. So I'm going to say exact same questions which I asked before. Show me pictures of Thomas. Pictures of Thomas Muller. So here we are showing that, that what the contextually smartness for an assistant uh, could mean. To be, again, using the context to interpret things. But now context can be also used for conversation, to have back and forth conversations. Um, for example, where is the Empire State Building? The address for Empire State Building is Empire State Building, 355th Avenue, New York, New York, 10118, USA. I want to see pictures. So I don't need to repeat and say pictures of Empire State Building, just I say I want to see pictures in a natural way. Ah, <laughs> or... <laughs> now you know that this is real. These came back from a search. I want to see pictures. Pictures of the Empire State Building, all right. How tall is it? The Empire State Building is 381 meters tall. Who built it? The Empire State Building was designed by William F. Lamb, Yasuo Matsui, and Gregory Johnson. When? Construction for the Empire State Building started in March 17, 1930. So you can see that I'm talking about a topic uh, without, under, without repeating myself. In every sentence, the assistant understands the meaning of what I'm saying, thanks to interpreting things into the context. Um, let me show you another type of context. That's actually why I took an apple with me here. Um, so one of the different new types of context that we're working on is the co visual context. And um, so let's see whether we can easily show this here. So I'm now pointing to an apple, and we'll ask an easy question. Um, how many calories does it have? There are 95 calories in one medium apple. So now we have a, now, now I'm showing you an assistant which can see and can, uh, you can talk about what, she, what it sees together. Um, the context can be also context of location. For example, we are at this place now, right? I can ask something like, um, um, what is the history of this place? Here's a summary from Wikipedia. So, so Tobacco Dock is a grade I listed warehouse in the Docklands area of the East End of London, United Kingdom. It was constructed in a... So, so this, is, this, is, this is what, again, this is um, uh, understanding context in different types of context. Could be context of what, uh, what we're showing, context of what I talked before, and, uh, and also context of where I'm standing at. 
And now uh, for the last example I want to show you uh, is about the, the, the actual speech recognition improvements. So maybe you have noticed that, um, uh, that it worked, the speech recognition, in all my examples, perhaps in the, the one which was just one which was going longer. And we actually have improved a lot. The, the real, the, the core technology behind has improved a lot. Many people played uh, with speech recognition two years ago and uh, they think it doesn't work, you have to give it a try now if you think that, uh, that, uh, that uh, because the, the core technology behind has improved a lot. So, uh, but uh, I like to make my, myself a challenge for that. I want to also show you how in a noisy environment speech recognition has improved. For that, I will, uh, I will uh, you need to help to help me. Basically, I will ask you at the moment, make as much noise as you can. You can scream, shout, or uh, in whatever creative way make noise. You have to try to make me fail. And then we can ask also my mic to be cut, and then I will ask a question like uh, my team, where, when is the next uh, uh, game of my team, uh, which, is, which you know, is Barcelona. So uh, then um, please cut my mic, and I take this closer to my mouth, and, uh, and make as much noise as you can. <laughs> when is Barcelona? I think you failed, but... Uh, but <laughs> But really, I think the, the, the tech, I can have my Mac back. Uh, the, the technology behind us really improved a lot. So what I showed you in the past uh, few minutes is that it's kind of examples of where, where these technologies are reaching. It's a point which we feel that it's becoming, like different pieces of technologies are uh, getting closer to each other to become much more useful and to be able to save much more time for us in, in our uh, daily lives. I think uh, what I'm actually, I, I, I love what I'm doing as a as, as job mostly because of the fact that I feel that we are in the business of reclaiming time, uh, lost time for, user, for people, so that uh, they can invest uh, their time on things which matters more. It's a little bit like uh, making uh, us live longer. Thank you.